Good morning, all of you. I would like uh, to welcome you all uh, on behalf of Edureka to this um, very informative uh, session today. I am Atita Arora, and um, I have been uh, working in um, solar, lucene, and related technologies. So, been here for about uh, nine years now, and um, I carry experience of uh, developing applications um, in um, social media, news, and uh, healthcare domains. So, I would be taking you through a quick um, introduction on how we can um, build, uh, you know, better applications with uh, Apache Solar. So, uh, I would not uh, waste any more time. I'll just go ahead and. Uh, um, I believe if um, everyone is aware of uh, how, you know, Edureka works, so uh, we give you live online classes and um, you have the class recordings which are available um, through LMS, which is the learning management uh, system, which is uh, managed by Edureka. <clears throat> and we have uh, the 24 by 7 post class support, so if you have any questions, you can reach out to the trainer. And uh, if at all you have any more questions uh, while practicing or, you know, going through the content or the recording which is uh, made available to you, you can always reach out to our um, support guys. They're pretty, you know, fast and uh, pretty good. Then uh, the material which we are going to provide you with, it comes uh, handy with, uh, you know, all the modules and the, there are quiz which uh, check your level of uh, learning. And uh, the quizzes are uh, separated and are bifurcated module-wise. And just to ensure that uh, you've learned what was intended to be delivered, we have the project work. And after completing that, you have uh, the certificate, which is verifiable. You can always, you know, go ahead and, uh, you know, uh, look for a job or uh, use it to, uh, you know, showcase your talent. So. This is how, you know, things go about with Edureka. So, uh, about uh, this particular class today, because uh, generally the class uh, is, um, you know, for uh, three hours, and it happens to be on Saturdays and Sundays every week, and you have eight classes, which means that uh, it would be a month-long course, and um, it's a three hours uh, class. So, uh, today we, we just have, uh, uh, you know, one hour. So I want to utilize uh, as much as I can to make sure that uh, what exactly solar is all about and why is it so much sought after and why is a lot of companies are, you know, diverting towards uh, this uh, technology. And uh, we would be taking a few questions as well. So um, just to give you a brief, uh, you know, um, semantics, how do we go about the session is that I would be taking you through uh, these slides and would be, uh, you know, knowledge sharing uh, with you guys, as in how my experience is. So if you have any questions and at any given point of time you feel that uh, you're confused about something or you want to ask something or you have any questions which are related to solar or any other thing which is covered on the slide, please feel free to post up the questions on your question window. So we would be taking a, you know, logical break uh, once I complete a uh, few topics because uh, the time is very, very limited. So I will be taking up all the questions which you have posted on uh, your questions window. So let me just quickly go about taking up what exactly and what all we would be covering today in uh, the session today. So at the end of uh, this module, <clears throat> you would be able to understand that um, why do we need uh, search engines for the enterprise grade application? So why, why exactly is search needed is what we would be talking about. There, there are few objectives and a few challenges of uh, the search engine, which we would be discussing. We would be discussing about indexing and searching and why exactly would you need them, why exactly anyone would need them. Then we would be talking about indexing and searching. How is it handled by Lucene? Now, for, for folks who are a little confused about that the webinar was supposed to be talking about Apache Solar, but uh, there is something new which we are talking about here. So Apache Solar is um, nothing but, you know, nicely groomed up um, 
Lucene, which is again the Apache library, which is the search library basically. So uh, Apache Solar is built on top of uh, this uh, Lucene. So it handles every uh, bit of uh, what you know goes inside uh, solar. So indexing, searching, analyzing the data and stuff. So I would be taking you through that step by step. Then we would also be talking about what exactly is solar and what are the powerful features, what makes it so sought after by people in the industry. We would be talking about um, how data is stored and um, obviously because um, we would be talking about data so there has to be some schema. So what kind of schema solar supports and uh, what are the structures and what are the basic features and um, how do we achieve the big data or NoSQL needs using the solar cloud? So I guess uh, that is a big question as of now. We would also be talking about um, how we can leverage these uh, capabilities which come handy with solar and we can use um, the, you know, um, compactness and uh, the power of, uh, you know, Hadoop along with uh, solar. So I guess we all uh, understand that what Hadoop is needed for and what Solar is needed for. And then we would be briefly talking about the job opportunities of uh, the Solar developers. So I would also be taking up a, a small demo as well. So let me see how quickly we can you know, sum up things. So do we have any questions regarding uh, the, the plan which uh, we have discussed as of now? Any, any confusions, anything else? Okay, Nitin says all clear. So I believe uh, Nitin, you, uh, you must have uh, got a kind of glimpse that what exactly we would be you know, covering today. So what all are you going to take home today after the session? So believe me guys, uh, let's make it very, very interactive uh, session. I would be uh, asking a few uh, questions as well um, during the sessions. And feel free to post up any questions uh, you would like. I'm not going to ignore any questions. We're just going to make sure that we do not break the logical flow of the session. So how many of us have uh, really used uh, this website, flipkart.com? Um, let's see, how many are uh, tech freaks uh, here? Okay, all of us, yeah. Actually, indeed, uh, all of us must have used uh, this website, and I'm sure Everyone must have uh, seen this um, search um, <clears throat> field out here. And in this field, uh, we really exploit this field. We type in whatever we want and um, you get, um, you know, suggestions. You get um, what is the most popular product in the category of uh, the products you're looking for. So over here, if um, I, I say that uh, if, if we do not have this search uh, text box available on this window. How would this website look like to you? Any guesses? How would this look like to you? How about using any e-commerce website without the search text field? Would it be easy? Would it be user friendly? Yeah, bit tedious. Uh, yeah, right, Nitin. It actually makes no sense. So, so the, the user friendliness and, um, oh yes, Naresha gave a very nice example, car without steering. In fact, this text field act as a steering, that which direction or which kind of product or what kind of category of product are you looking for? So, um, certainly, yeah, right. So, uh, I mean, you guys are, um, way more uh, bright than I actually thought. So, uh, right, I mean, if, if we are supposed to be using any e-commerce website and we do not have this text field over here, imagine, you know, going through, uh, you know, a flat file search, you would have to go through each document one by one and uh, evaluating that, uh, is this what I need? No, close this down, open another one. Is this what I need? No, not really, close this down, another one. So it would be like a flat searching for um, anyone. So all these, you know, fancy features of, uh, you know, putting up nice photographs and providing you with offers and stuff is going to be of no use if you cannot make a um, product searchable. So these are a few of the things which make it so uh, essential to have this field on uh, your website. Along with that, on the left hand side, if you see that we have provided more flexibility to, to the search that uh, the products which are rendered on the basis of the text which you're searching, 
they are bifurcated on the basis of uh, the price range they belong to, the brand they belong to, the operating system they work on, and on the right hand side you have few suggested products that people who were looking for the kind of product you are looking for also consider looking these products as well. So this comes handy, I mean if I am very very new to the e-commerce website, I say I am looking for a quad core mobile phone and I have a um, few suggestions out here with KitKat OS with um, you know it's a Sony mobile phone or is there any uh, you know screen specification I want to you know provide along with my search um, text. So this is providing me with the auto suggestions as well. Along with that it also consists of what are the popular category of products which uh, fall under the same category or the same um, product um, uh, you know bracket of uh, the same product which we are looking for currently. So this makes it so flexible for anyone to look for a price or a brand or any particular feature you are uh, typically considering when searching for any particular product. So this could be, I mean this is the mobile uh, you know example which we have taken. It could be anything like um, you know um, it could be a dress or it could be um, hardware um, you know uh, essentials, a hard drive or headphones and stuff. So you can easily uh, you know look for the product which you are looking for on the basis of price, on the basis of brands. So this is all configurable. So this is all controlled by the um, XMLs and the configurations which come handy with Solar. So I mean if you look here, I mean uh, the, the first um, text field which we have highlighted is the text based, uh, text -based uh, searching. Uh, so it aids to the text we can provide for searching. The second one which we have highlighted is uh, one of uh, the powerful feature which comes handy with Solar is like uh, filtering the result set on the basis of say price or brand, operating system or say could be anything. So it could be you know features as well. So third one is uh, we have highlighted one picture which is not really a picture but everything goes inside in the form of a document. So when you click on this particular product you are uh, redirected to a screen which consists of all the information. Right now we are just um, you know uh, summing up all the information like uh, the name, the star rating of uh, this product, say which category it belongs to in mobile, in mobile category, then the actual price and the sale price which is offered by the site and there are few important features which we feel distinguish this product from the other products. So this is how we are representing this um, product as of now. However, if you click on this product you are redirected to the document which consists of all the information regarding this particular product. So this is how essentially a search engine works. So it makes it really really easy for the user to trace or find <coughs> a particular product which they are looking for. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, over here if we, if we talk about that um, we are talking about the search engine or the search capabilities of an application, what exactly should it all have? Like um, if, if you need to have a storage engine to search records or documents on the basis of uh, text or um, you know the, the free text keywords, so it should support following features. So first of all it, it should uh, give you the optimized uh, results for uh, faster uh, text searches. So along with that it should also provide you with the feature that uh, there could be a case in which um, few of the products may not have uh, the same fields as um, the fields in the other product, right? So let me just quickly take an example like uh, talking about schema and if you are talking about the mobile phones here. So uh, suggest me guys, we have uh, name of the mobile phone, we have uh, brand of the mobile phone, we have say price range of the mobile phone. Can you guys uh, guess any, any more, um, any more uh, um, schema fields? A mobile phone no. OS yes, processor yes, yes guys, wow, okay processor and um, yeah screen resolution, right and uh, camera yes, so RAM yes, color yes, right. So you can have a uh, hell lot of features these days I mean. So uh, we are not uh, needing a um, system which is going to limit us with uh, that every product should have these uh, 
you know fields i mean every uh, product may not may or may not have uh, these um, you know um, field values like a normal you know a phone might not have a camera so i could say that no there is no camera or i might not provide any information so if i'm talking about the iphone i say that yes it has a camera and it has got um, say 8 uh, mp um, resolution and um, on the other hand i have some very very you know basic mobile phone which do not have any camera so either i can say that um, not available or i can say i i have i should have a freedom that i can add or not add any values pertaining to any field so it should it should be flexible enough to accommodate these kind of um, um you know um, features so if i'm pushing any document inside the repository my um, you know uh, my document when i'm saying document it means that uh, i'm talking about one um, lucene document so uh, guys uh, this is this is one um, you know uh, similarity or i can say uh, i mean I, i just want to create a little similarity for you guys to understand how things really work with uh, lucene so i'm sure everyone of us have uh, worked on um, some rdbms so, some database of any any variant i'm sure most of us have uh, worked on some sort of db yes no maybe right okay nitin says yes okay all right all right okay so uh, i i hope everyone understands that whatever goes inside a database uh, you know goes inside in a form of a record right everyone is aware of that as well so everything goes inside a database in the form of a record in the similar manner in lucene everything goes inside in the form of a document right so likewise you can have a small similarity that um, in a database we have something like column column and um, we define that what type of uh, column it is going to be what are the limitations uh, if it is going to be say primary key or not so this is how we define the um, schema in our database table in this similar manner when we talk about lucene or solar for that matter we have the xmls so they are going to control that um, what all i mean this basically defines that um, uh, a record is going to consist of uh, say n columns and uh, what are going to be their type in the similar manner we have lucene and everything goes inside in the form of a document and every document is going to have a field and the fields are going to have the properties in the similar manner we have the uh column properties in our database is that clear guys i mean i'm sure this is going to help to understand how things really work so do not get confused when i say uh you know document document a uh, lot many times because what i'm essentially talking about is a record so everything uh, in database which was a record is um, you know um, set or called a document in lucene or solar okay so uh so it should uh, support uh, sorting of documents as well because uh, obviously we would be wanting um, to you know look and um, sort the documents on the basis of how user would want to along with that it should be web scalable which means that it should be optimized for reads because uh, the data which is um, on the website is um, read more more number of times so i mean i'm i'm um, not sure about the figure but uh, the flipkart amazon these sites uh, i'm sure are visited by hell lot of people every day so your um, you know hardware your software your application should be robust enough to handle uh, you know so so many uh, you know number of reads so along with that it should be document oriented as well the search engine why because everything which is displayed to the user is displayed in the form of a document so everything comes handy uh, when we have a document or say a record based uh, system here in right so everyone um, is uh, aligned to these uh, things that um, we should have uh, a system which supports all of these features any other feature you guys feel a search engine should have apart from the features which we have listed here yes no maybe no okay 
So I guess uh, we're good enough. So um, this is one of the examples from um, the clear trip uh, spatial search. So spatial search, if uh, I mean you guys are not aware of, uh, just to you know reiterate. So we we are going to perform a search on say a map, and every document, essentially, which I mean, is, what I mean is a record. So every every uh, you know record is going to consist of a lat long uh, field and we are going to represent that particular lat long field on the map so we can also search on the basis of the position or the uh, location of that particular document so if you look here this is the spatial search uh, ui which is provided by cleotrip and um, if you look here um, uh, there are a lot of uh, you know pointers over here and um, it is basically representing all these um, hotels out here on the map so if you if you look for a particular hotel it is going to you know um, tell you that what is the landmark or um, how far is this hotel from uh, the, the place you are in what is the star rating what is the location what is the price range per night rate of uh, this hotel so this is how the special search uh, looks like so this is again this is uh, the add on feature which came handy um, with solar after um, solar 4 okay have you guys seen this ui before the spatial search uh, ui have you guys ever needed uh, things to be you know displayed onto the maps does this uh, pointer help yeah okay cool so okay all right so uh, just to give you a brief intro about um, you know lucene first because uh, solar is built on uh, top of uh, lucene so um, I i'm not sure if uh, if you guys are not aware of uh, this guy here a anyone uh, who can relate to this uh, this guy with something else other than uh, lucene the duck cutting yeah hadoop okay all right oh okay okay all right wow what an overwhelming response <laughs> okay ev everyone is aware of um, who this guy is great so okay so so this guy is indeed uh, the creator of uh, hadoop as well so i mean he created uh, lucene way back i think in 2004 and he named um, lucene um, as uh, lucene after his wife's name so uh, Lucene is uh, the very, very powerful uh, Java search library that lets you easily add or, uh, you know, uh, the uh, incorporating the search capability of uh, uh, on the textual uh, search on your application. So you can add the information retrieval and the text searching on your application using this library. So you can be rest assured about how robust this library is going to be that uh, this is used by LinkedIn, Twitter, I guess Amazon as well, and there are many more. I mean, uh, when you get the, this um, presentation, I'm, I'm sure, make sure that you click on this link and you'll see that uh, there's so many, you know, robust names which are actually using Lucene because it is highly scalable and it is high performing indexing um, API. So it lets you create the powerful and accurate and efficient search algorithm on the basis of uh, your needs. And again, it is uh, cross uh, platform um, as well. And it is open source. So you're not supposed to be paying anything against the licensing cost. It is 100% pure Java. So that vouched for um, why it is um, you know, supported on uh, most of the platforms. In fact, every platform for that matter. So implementation is also available in other programming languages as well, which are index capable. So how does that really goes about? I mean, we have been talking about, okay, all right. So you guys know a lot of things. I mean, I, I'm pretty impressed with most of you folks. I mean, great. So we have been talking about indexing and searching quite a lot because these are the two say um, uh, you know essential features which should be there when you're talking about a search engine so how does indexing really works about 
So like, uh, look here, I mean, uh, we have taken example of uh, three documents here. So we have the first document which consists of uh, the text, uh, I like Edureka courses, and uh, the document two, um, say D2 is the document ID. It uh, says that Edureka teaches big data courses. The third document, D3, is saying that Edureka helps learn new technologies easily. Now, if you look here, we have, uh, we have uh, this created out of the information which was provided. So if you submit these three documents for indexing, we are going to have this type of matrix. So this matrix is nothing but a inverted index matrix. So we're going to talk about it in a little while. So over here, if you see, we have uh, split all the uh, documents in the form of uh, key terms. So if you look here, we, we have picked Edureka and courses from the first document. Then we picked out Edureka teaches big data from the, uh, and the courses from the second document and essentially the similar terms from the uh, third document as well. So if you look here, we have ignored few terms here like I and like and uh, new, easily. These, these things we have ignored. So we would be discussing why we have ignored that as well. So we are essentially storing the crux of all the documents here. And we are maintaining a matrix in the format that we are going to maintain something like um, if, uh, you know, we are storing all the terms here, key terms. Edureka is uh, there in uh, document D1, D2, and D3. Courses, the word as, an, as a key term is there in D1 and in D2 as well. Along with that, when we just spoke about the third term, teachers, it is there in um, document two only. Similarly, big data and helps, uh, sorry, big and data was there in document two. However, helps was there in document three only. So this is the kind of index which Lucene builds up at its end. So whenever somebody is looking for Edureka, for that matter, it is going to quickly look into that what all documents uh, consist of this word. So it is going to go through, not going to go through all the documents. I mean, it is not going to go through like the flat searching mode. It is not going to, you know, go through the entire content of each document. It is going to simply refer to this matrix, this table only. And it is going to quickly see that this term was there in which all documents. So this is something very, very easy to look up. I mean, you guys can um, see that. I mean, the difference uh, in parsing through all the documents or, you know, quickly referring to this matrix. Which one is going to be easy? Any of you? Obviously, the matrix one, yeah? Yeah, right. So, so this, this matrix is something which Lucene looks for when it is looking for searching. So, during indexing process, it is actually analyzing, it is going to... Um, break or strip all the content which uh, is, uh, you know, decided on the basis of algorithms which you are using. So it is going to discard uh, common, you know, English um, words like I, like, new, easily. So it has ignored these words. It has not indexed these words. So this is on the basis of the algorithm which on which uh, we were analyzing or indexing this data. So we're going to quickly talk about that as well. So let us not uh, confuse you guys with introducing too many terms on each slide. So we have spoken about the document to be consisted of uh, number of fields. So the number of fields is pretty flexible in case of Lucene. So say, uh, I mean, um, unlike uh, the RDBMS, the schema is not very rigid. So if, if you're trying to push any data in a table in RDBMS, which would not consist of uh, a particular field value, so it is, it is not going to, uh, you know, successfully uh, push the data inside that table. However, the case is not same in case of Lucene. So if at all you have that uh, field therein, it is going to uh, store that uh, field's value. If you do not uh, push any value for that particular field, it is simply going to um, consider that this document do not consider, do not uh, consist of this field. So in this similar manner, we have a document which is a set of fields and it goes inside the uh, system, which consists of the analyzer. 
So analyzer, as the word suggests, is going to analyze the con uh, content. So the analyzer is um, going to con uh, consist of uh, the process wherein uh, all the data is basically parsed and uh, on the basis of the algorithm, you have a few uh, analyzers which come handy with the Lucene library itself. However, if you want, you can um, build uh, something uh, similar to what, uh, you know, as per your choice. So in our course, in, um, in this course, which uh, we're going to start soon, the Apache Solar course. So we, we basically uh, talk about the code as well. So we're going to talk about how you can use the analyzers, which come handy with Solar. However, if you want, you can also build up your own analyzer. So the analyzer is uh, basically the process which is going to analyze your content. And this is going to uh, say accept the content in the form of a document and then it is going to render you the tokens. The tokens are then pushed to the index writer and then the indexes are written in, inside the uh, directory. Okay? Is that clear guys? Do you have any confusions over here? Meanwhile, I see that there are a few questions over here. Erpen asked me that uh, does Lucene works on the basis of inverted indexes? Yes, correct Erpen? Yes. So uh, it works on the inverted indexing um, only. And I'm going to quickly discuss what exactly is inverted indexing uh, in case, uh, you know, all of us are not uh, aware of what inverted indexes are. So Manish says uh, metrics is easy but tough to maintain. Uh, not really Manish. I mean, um, this, this, is, uh, this comes pretty handy when you talk about, um, say, the documents which are coming in the form of a stream and you have indexes which are uh, rendered by the analyzer itself, it would uh, simply go and update the existing metrics. So it, it is not really tough, I mean, as in how you think. So along with that, uh, okay, Erpen has another question. Can you please show the example of for the control flow? Okay, I would be showing you a few examples as well. Okay, how does analyzer and index writer look like and where is the directory stored? Yes, um, okay, I would be taking you through that as well. Rakesh, yes, you can uh, develop your own uh, custom analyzer as well. I'm not sure if this is going to make any sense. I'm just give, going to give you a little tweak on what exactly do we do in the classes here. So if, if you look here, we have this, uh, I mean, uh, we generally discuss this, um, you know, very, very explicitly uh, in the classes which um, we do. Uh, so if you look here, these are a few of the Java examples in which uh, we spoke about how you can use that in your code. So the, the course uh, does not really, you know, talks about what solar is and how can you, you know, make it work, how can you accommodate it, what are the features and stuff. We give you the practical knowledge as well. So we, we let you know that how exactly can you use this particular feature or, uh, you know, this, uh, the, the power of uh, the things which are developed and um, delivered by solar in your existing application. So we, we completely guide you through the entire workflow. So I'm not sure. For some reason, I'm not able to pull out the code. Yeah, actually. Right, Erpen, it is actually stuck. So let me take a few slides and um, we'll come back to this and I'll show you. We, we have uh, developed a few analyzers. In fact, uh, I gave uh, this as one of the assignments uh, to my classes that uh, they were actually wanting to use, uh, you know, few features from uh, some some analyzer and um, some other, you know, few other features from uh, some other analyzer. So they asked me that, can we use uh, more than one um, analyzer in, um, in, in the process? So the, the process goes in such a manner that we can use uh, only one type of, um, say, uh, the, the tokenizer and, um, we can use multiple filters. So I would be coming up to that in a little while. So that this is going to be more clear when uh, we see that in action, basically. So I think uh, everyone is clear about uh, how the flow goes like, right? We have documents, we analyze the content, we create the tokens out of it, and we push the tokens to the index writer, 
which writes all the tokens to the directory. So directory is nothing but the file system, basically. So if you look here, these are, uh, this is my uh, instance, the solar instance. So this is another very handy feature which uh, comes with uh, solar is that uh, it supports uh, multiple collections or multiple cores on a single instance. So I ju I'm just running a single instance on my machine. However, I can bifurcate or I can separate out the collections um, on the basis of um, how and uh, how as exactly you know I I want it to be. So like I have um, I have. Uh, uh, bifurcated my uh, you know uh, data in uh, four uh, cores collection one collection two edureka and hotels so if you would like to see that how uh, data is uh, basically stored so this is the index files which are generated which are created by lucene and solar so this is how the data is stored so i mean um, you would have to specify that what all fields goes inside the indexes, what all uh, does not uh, goes inside the indexes. So essentially this is how the indexes would look like. I think that is one of the questions from a few folks out here. Yeah. Okay. So along with that, uh, okay, Nitin says, does analyze take care of stop words? Yes, indeed, Nitin. We, we, in fact, I mean, I, I'm not sure, actually, I should have uh, said a few things out here. If you, if you look here, this is while indexing. So you can use uh, the analyzer. If, if you look here, I, I should have actually shown you this in Eclipse. Would have been more clear then. But anyway, the, the, uh, while writing the content to the directory, we can um, analyze the content on the basis of or the choice of analyzer you want. Likewise for here. Uh, we are using the standard analyzer, which has certain features. So I'm not going to go uh, into you know depth of uh, what standard analyzer does. We have simple analyzer, we have stop word analyzer, we have photo stemming analyzer. So you have a lot of analyzers available with Lucene, okay? And we are going to provide all the examples of using that through code uh, in the real classes. So right now I'm just uh, wanting to give you the idea of how things go about. Um, yeah, indeed, uh, Raj, this is uh, pretty similar to what happens in Hadoop as well. Okay. Um, Rahul also asked me this question that, hi, if I have to specify what goes inside the indexes, then what does analyzer do? Okay. So I guess, uh, I'm not sure, Rahul, if you noticed here, we created a file here. Okay. And if you, if you look here, we are creating the indexes here and we can choose uh, okay let me just uh, quickly okay this is the document and these are the fields if you look here these are the few of the fields here so if you, if you look here uh, Rahul we can uh, mention the properties as field store yes or no and index uh, true or false so we can specify that through code as well and through configurations as well. So I'm not going to go uh, in details about this. So because we have a fixed agenda for um, this webinar. So I'm not going to divert. I'm, I'm not going to actually take you through the details as such. So what I'm wanting to do here is that I'm actually wanting to give you a nice idea of how things go about. So these things are covered basically in the actual course which we run. So, um, We've spoken about how data is indexed in the Lucene. However, at the query time as well, we, we have analyzers available. So likewise, there is a, a, a small example I would like to uh, you know, give you that uh, uh, say I have uh, the school website on and I want to discard if uh, anyone is um, using any abusive uh, language or abusive text searches on my system. So I'm not actually going to let that search go through on my system, on my application data. In fact, I'm going to just quickly discard that, uh, you know, text at the query time itself. So I can make my custom analyzer, which I can use at the time of query. And then I can sort out the data on the basis of the analysis or the kind of uh, subroutine I have uh, provided in my code. So if you look here, we have uh, uh, the query parser over here 
which translates your text from the end into the arbitrarily complex query for searching. So the query parser is uh, going to also work on the similar concept of anal analysis. It is also going to be um, analyzed through the analyzer and it is going to break this into the text fra uh, fragments. Then it is going to create the query object from this and then it is going to push this uh, query object through the index searcher which is going to um, push this query object to the um, index directory and it is going to fetch out the results as in how they are required. Okay? Is that clear guys? Okay, Sujeev says, does filtering use indexes or only searches? Uh, um, I think Sujeev, you're talking about the faceting filter which we were talking about, yeah? Am I correct? Yeah. So, yes, it is also going to use the indexes only. In fact, uh, another very, very important thing uh, in Lucene is that if you are, uh, you know, skipping a field, say I have uh, this uh, similar the similar scheme I had and I'm saying that I am uh, indexing name, I'm indexing brand, I'm indexing price but I'm not indexing OS and processor. Another thing to take a keynote of here is that if I'm not indexing a particular field, I would not be able to search through that field. So essentially to support the search feature that particular field value is supposed to be indexed. Okay? Is that clear Sujit? Does that answer your question? So, in a way, uh, the, the filtering which we are applying on um, the data sets, it, it essentially has to go through the process of indexing. Again, this is another very, very nice feature which comes handy with the uh, uh, solar is that scoring. Scoring is nothing but uh, the, uh, you know, we are um, assigning the weightage to few documents in the result set. So, I'm, I'm sure uh, everyone must have seen the paid ads on Google. So, so when we are looking for a particular, say, uh, text, we, we have a few documents which come, um, uh, you know, as the topmost results in the, in the Google. Ha have you ever seen that? They're basically the advertisements. Have you ever seen that? Any one of you? Yeah? Yes, no, maybe? Okay. So, I guess Sujit has uh, seen it. Okay, Nitin is also seen, Raj is also seen. Uh, yeah, Arpan, right. So e-commerce website are basically making money out of it by endorsing few brands. So this is in fact the, uh, you know, the, the sole motto of it, that we are providing a weightage on uh, a particular, say, uh, search uh, keyword. So it, this can be done on, the, on uh, the index time and on the query time as well. So at the time of indexes, creating the indexes, we can always say that field.setBoost and we can uh, boost that particular field. So uh, the boost is basically used because uh, in solar, uh, let me just take a quick example over here. Uh, over here, so maybe this is going to be more clear if we take a quick example over here. So if you look here, I'm saying uh, star dot star which is more like uh, select star from your database or table. So this works in a similar manner. So you, so I have 42 documents which are here and I have uh, this document which is coming first. So there is a reason this document comes in the first place is that this document, there is a, a score which comes along with each document. So it is actually, um, this particular document is having more score than the rest of the documents and that is why it is coming first in the uh, in the uh, search results. So scoring is doing the similar thing. Scoring is helping you have more score. The, the score of the document is basically boosted. So you can achieve that uh, at the time of indexing and at the time of query as well. So we can do that. So um, we basically have a few, uh, we, we have a full, you know, lecture which is dedicated to the scoring um, in, the, in the course. So Lucene allows influencing search result by boosting, by, uh, you know, using boosting at the time of indexes and at the time of query as well. So this is going to affect the score of that document and hence affects the position of that document in the search results. 
Yeah. I hope the idea is clear. Anyone has got any any confusion about this? Okay, Nitin says, what if all are, uh, okay, you mean all the documents are boosted, is what you mean to say. Okay, so uh, Nitin, uh, if all the documents are boosted, or let me say an example in, in uh, which uh, you have two documents which have the similar score. I think that is going to be more appropriate example. All the documents cannot be boosted as such. So all the documents cannot have all the terms which are there, right? Yeah, okay, so I, I got a question. So in that case, these two documents are uh, going to appear, uh, I mean, if they're going to have uh, the same um, score, this is, okay. Hari, I'm not sure uh, what are you asking? What, what do you want to make sure? So let me just quickly take up uh, Nathan's question. Okay, um, again, um, Hari, uh, if you, trying to push the same document again and again if you if you look here let me just quickly take up this question Nathan. so if you see here this is the id of that document and uh, if you look here just to answer your question you have uh, I, i'm just trying to push a document over here and say i have id 123 and say the title or say name name is um, My system is very, very slow today. I wonder why. So I'm just trying to submit this document. It went ahead. Okay. However, if I say that the ID of this document is 123, name is Hari, and next time I push the another document which has the ID 123, but the name is Sinitan, it is going to go through again. Okay. So if I am looking for something, I say that I'm looking for name as Hari. What do you guys think? Am I going to have any results here? Because the ID was same. Do you think we are going to have any results over here? No. Actually, if you're going to push the same document, it is going to override that same document again and again. However, if you're going to look for Nathan, you're going to find the document with the name Nathan because that particular document was overwritten. Is the idea clear? It is actually going to override the same document again and again, but the processing is going to be an overkill. So there is no mechanism by which we can. Okay. So let me just quickly uh, cover a few concepts, okay? I would, I would uh, hold on the questions as of now, okay? Let me just quickly wrap up the presentation and uh, we can uh, say that uh, we can take a few uh, questions uh, once uh, I complete the designated topics. Is that fine, guys? Because, uh, I mean, I, even I do not want to stretch um, o over the uh, time which is assigned for the session, okay? So, okay. Uh -oh. Okay, let me just uh, see. Okay, so this is how my uh, search system would uh, basically look like. Okay, so uh, this is uh, essentially how my search system looks like. All, all the parts which are highlighted in blue are uh, the part of uh, the uh, leucine and uh, rest of the parts are um, outside the leucine. Okay, so the, the first step is going to be uh, Obviously, the indexing, we have been talking about it. So, second step is going to be the analysis. We are going to analyze the document. And then the third step is going to be searching, which is the practical usability of the uh, data which we have indexed. All right? So, over here, if you see that uh, there could be many ways in which I could acquire the content. All the content which is acquired from the, say, web or PDF or Word documents or any document repository, I'm going to build a document which uh, my Lucene, you know, uh, system understands. So I need to have a document which essentially needs to consist of field and value pairs, okay? Then I'm going to push this particular document into the uh, um, subroutine where I'm going to analyze the content of this document. And then I'm going to index the document on the basis of all the tokens which I retrieve out of this uh, analysis. So I hope everyone is clear about this, that my analysis phase is going to give you the tokens, 
the tokens which are generated on the basis of the subroutine which is as per the analyzer I'm using okay so then after this uh, all the indexes all the tokens it goes through the indexing procedure and it goes inside the indexes so this is uh, this red thing is going to be uh, where my indexes are going to be stored this is similar to the directory indexes which I have just shown you okay so over here the user is going to uh, be provided a search UI and it is going to um, say um, look or search for a particular field or say particular document or particular product for that matter so it is going to analyze this particular query and it is going to build a query out of this then it is going to run this query where on the indexes this red indexes and then these indexes are going to return the results as in for the query which you have provided likewise I, I just uh, sent a query on my UI saying name is equal to Hari or name is equal to Nitin so this basically converts the query in the format which the index store can understand then it runs the query and it renders the results on the same UI through which uh, the user has fired the query okay so this is how the normal search system works like okay so over here if you see uh, indexing is the processing of the original data into highly efficient cross-reference lookup in order to facilitate rapid searching okay then we are actually analyzing search engine does not index text directly right we have uh, spoken about it the text is basically broken into series of individual atomic elements which are called tokens so I think I've just said I've just uh, explained that then we have the procedure of searching which is the process of consulting the search index and retrieving the documents matching the query which you have given through the UI and they're sorted or not sorted on the basis of how they are um, expected or how they're requested from the UI okay so from here we have uh, we have understood that what exactly is um, uh, leucine on on top of which uh, we have solar so we, we understand that what runs uh, you know under the hood of uh, solar right so from here we will be discussing what uh, are the features which are provided uh, as add-on on uh, the features which are provided by Lucene okay so what exactly is solar solar is nothing but an open source enterprise search server so you can also say that uh, it is a web application I would say it is a NoSQL uh, database server as well so it uses the Lucene search library and it extends it further to provide uh, very very powerful features like faceting highlighting uh, special searching and stuff so we would be quickly seeing that as well so solar is uh, very very useful because it exposes everything in the form of a restful uh, web services so if you see here the, the query is the web service uh, the, the restful uh, API which it has exposed so which makes it very very easy for us to um, look through the data which we have indexed right so solar gives you that power okay and it exposes uh, many other restful services as well so we're going to quickly uh, you know see through what all things come handy with solar here so if uh, if you see here this is another I mean I'm, I'm actually running uh, another uh, you know okay another uh, say uh, web service which is also exposed by solar this is the UI which comes handy with uh, solar so this is the web service which is exposed browse which uh, you know renders uh, this uh, nice UI for you guys so you have this UI which is basically the admin console this is the admin console so you have a hell lot of features here you have the dashboard which uh, tells you that what is the configuration of your system on which uh, you are running this uh, particular instance you have the logging feature available then you have the core admin so this uh, level of logging is something you can control you have the GMX monitoring which is also supported through solar then you have the core admin which is going to control that how many cores cores I think I've just uh, discussed that it uh, bifurcates the data storage so that is the essential uh, uh, you know feature which comes handy with solar that you can distribute your data set in uh, the form of uh, 
the collections. So you can have uh, various uh, cores on uh, your um, solar instance. Okay, then you can also tweak into what kind of uh, Java properties uh, this particular instance has. You can also select the core you would like to work on from here, the core selector. Okay, and uh, if you have uh, just seen, I was actually looking into one of uh, the cores here. So you have, uh, again, okay, what is happening with my system? Okay, so you have uh, the cores here. So when I selected collection one here, you have the overview of this particular core. You can analyze the schema of that particular core. You can import data from some other database through this um, feature. You can push in the documents through uh, this UI. So all of these are the RESTful services which are exposed by Solar, okay? Also, you can query through HTTP GET and receive the text results in the form of uh, XML, JSON, CSV, or binary results, so as in how they're required by you. So this is all on the basis of uh, need basis UI, okay? So putting uh, the documents inside a particular core is nothing but indexing, okay? I guess we are all clear about uh, this thing. Do we have any confusions regarding this? Okay, Arpan says, uh, the score is equal to collection. Oh, uh, well, Arpan, that is, uh, again, uh, totally on the use case uh, which you have. So if, if you want to have uh, say a separate collection for each of the category of product you have. Yes, you can say that my, my co collection one core is going to have the products from the mobile um, category. Say my collection two is going to have the products from my uh, laptop category, something similar to that, okay? Rakesh says that Solar also provides crawler kind of thing. Uh, Rakesh, I think essentially you're talking about how do we basically extract data from uh, various uh, formats. Is that what you're asking? Am I right? Is that right, Rakesh? So, okay, if, if that is your question, then yes, we have the uh, extra, uh, we have the content extraction uh, uh, handler, which um, comes handy with Solar only. So I'm going to quickly take example of that as well. Meanwhile, I see that uh, we've already uh, reached uh, nine o'clock, which was actually a designated time of this uh, you know, webinar, but I'm going to extend a little bit if you guys are going to bear with me. Is it fine if we extend, or extend for say 15 minutes? I'm going to quickly wrap up the webinar. Yeah, okay, okay. So Nitin says that, uh, do we create a core according to the department? Uh, Nitin, again, that is totally on the basis of your needs. So if you want to say uh, index the employees data which belong to the different departments, yes, you can build the cores on the different departments as well, okay? All right, so I'm going to quickly cover the key features. So again, Solar comes with all the features which come handy with Lucene. Along with that, it provides you with the advanced uh, full text uh, search capabilities as well. So we have just seen a quick example of that. We pushed in a document and immediately we could query that document as well. So this gives you a very nice, you know, real time, near real time searches. So along with that, it comes handy with optimized uh, for uh, very, very high volume of web traffic. So considering that it has been so sought after, so you can understand that how optimized this is for handling the high volume of web traffic. Along with that, it provides you the standards for open interfaces like XML, JSON, and HTTP. Along with that, it comes handy with the HTML administration interface. So I've just shared with you the admin console as well. The server stats uh, can be monitored through GMX. So we have a complete, um, you know, uh, say a, a dedicated uh, one and a half hour, uh, you know, session on that as well. How do we go about, you know, doing this as well in the real course? We have uh, near real time indexing, which is adapt adaptable with XML configurations. I think I've just uh, taken an example for that when I pushed a document inside and we could immediately retrieve it in the text results as well. It is linearly scalable. Auto index replication is also provided. So this, these all features are there in the Solar Cloud, which came after um, Solar 4. So these are all the companies or I would say the brands which are uh, you know using Solar. So I think uh, everyone can see that uh, 
all the respected and uh, reputed brands are using uh, solar. So brands like Apple, NASA, AT&T, Cisco, everyone seems to be using it. So this is uh, the uh, very, very uh, extensive uh, architecture. So have we been in the classes uh, of solar? I would have taken at least an hour to describe what this architecture is all about. So because I'm anyway running short of time, so I'm just going to quickly tell you that these are the, uh, you know, REST uh, APIs which I was talking about. These are essentially called the request handlers in the solar uh, terminology. So we have admin, select, spell. We can have uh, the custom request handlers as well. So for that, we would have to write our own uh, servlets. Then we have the request writers, which is uh, basically, uh, you know, uh, telling you that what uh, is uh, the format of the request uh, which comes to the solar server. Then we have the update handlers here, which again, uh, this, uh, you know, kind of uh, distinguish between the various uh, content uh, uh, types which it can handle. Along with that, it has uh, search components, which are essentially the advanced features which, um, you know, come um, along with solar, like the query search component, the highlighting, spelling, face sitting, more like this is um, like uh, the auto suggestion or auto correction feature. Then we have the clustering, debugging, stats. Uh, these are all these search components which come handy with uh, the solar. Distributed search is again uh, when we're talk talking about uh, the solar cl cloud. Uh, this takes care of the distributed search. So this talks about how the data has been replicated on uh, various shards and uh, how how the uh, leader and uh, the rest of the nodes are managed. So we have uh, this um, feature of ready-madely available in uh, the Solar 4. So that essentially has its own instance of a zookeeper, which makes sure that uh, what all, you know, shards are there and uh, which node has, uh, you know, which, uh, which shard and then uh, which is the leader node of uh, which shard. And, and stuff like that. So again, uh, because uh, we're supposed to be taking a little brief about how things go about, I'm going to quickly, uh, you know, give you a nice, you know, tweak into, you know, the architecture. Then we have the schema and the configuration. So again, this is something I would like to show you. So we saw the data directory, which consists of indexes here. However, if you look into another directory here, configuration directory, these are the two most important configuration files which are there. The schema XML and the solar config XML. The schema XML is going to describe that what all fields can go inside um, while indexing the data. And the solar config is basically going to manage how things are, uh, what all <coughs> search uh, handlers are there. And um, if you look here, oops. <coughs> if you look here, the query response writer and um, you can also define the clustering uh, which algorithm, on which, uh, uh, on the basis of which algorithm the clustering is done basically, okay. So all of these uh, configurations are maintained by um, this, uh, these two configuration files, the solar config XML and the schema XML. So I think they're pretty uh, clear by the name itself they have. Then we have the update processors. So signature logging and indexing are the uh, processors which come handy with it. Along with that, you have uh, the extract um, handler as well, the content extraction, which comes uh, along with the solar. So Apache Tika is one of uh, the libraries in which uh, you can, um, you know, parse the data from uh, the, the documents which come uh, from various sources in the various formats. Just a minute, guys. <coughs> okay. I'm having a nice, you know, very bad sore throat. Okay. So then we have the data import handler here. So this data import handler can handle the content from various sources like your SQL database, your RSS feeds, then you have the index replication. Again, this part is handled by the solar cloud. Okay. And then you have the um, advanced features like faceting, filtering, search, caching, highlighting, analysis, and query parsing, 
which are also the part of the architecture. And over here, if you see, we have been talking about that solar extends the architecture of Lucene, the features which come handy with Lucene. So over here, you can see that the essential, the basic features are provided by Apache Lucene only. However, uh, solar has extended the architecture of Lucene. Okay. This is the search process. So I think we have uh, discussed about this uh, as well. So the, the QT is going to provide you with uh, what is the query type. Okay. Then it is going to uh, uh, redirect you to the uh, stipulated um, request handler. So if you look in the um, uh, configuration file here. Okay, let me just say request handler only. So if you look here, these are the request handlers. So these are going to decide that if you're going to push your query or push your uh, request on select, it is going to redirect your request to that particular servlet. Okay. <clears throat> so this comes handy with um, all the configuration. So you can choose uh, your custom servlets as well if you have any complicated or um, complex features you want to incorporate. The dev type is go going to basically tell you that what query uh, parser are we going to use along with it. The query filter is going to define that what all fields you would like to see in your search results. Okay. So response writer, again, uh, we can also specify the number of rows we would like to see on a particular, you know, say, uh, search results. We can specify that from which, uh, uh, you know, index we would like to start um, rendering the results. FQ is nothing but the filter query, which is performed on the uh, results which are returned by the main query. Then WT is the response writer, which describes like what is the type in which you would like to see the results. Okay. So over here, if uh, you see, I can uh, choose uh, the type of my results as well. Likewise, I'm actually wanting to see the results in uh, XML format. I can do that as well. So over here, if you see, these are the type of result sets which are supported by Solar. So likewise, if you're working on Python, Ruby, or uh, PHP applications, you can directly say that um, I can directly use the results uh, in the format. The uh, results are rendered on the UI. Okay. I think we have pretty much covered uh, the velocity UI as well. So just in case uh, you guys are still um, wanting to have uh, more um, insight into it. So I, I'm going to quickly say that uh, this is similar to the uh, search uh, box which we have here. But this is going to be the more uh, interactive, uh, you know, this thing, uh, the UI. So if I say that I'm looking for, say, Samsung, it is going to provide me the autocorrection <coughs> of uh, the field which is already there in the um, indexes. And it is going to render all the results of the documents which are already there. Then it is going to provide me with the nice faces as, as well here. So if you look here, this is the category of all the facets which come handy. These are the query facets. We can also filter the query on the basis of the ranges. So these are the complex features which come along with uh, Solar. So you can incorporate all of these features in your application as well. Okay. Then we have the special searches as well. So this applies to all the documents uh, which have <coughs> the uh, point defined under them. So if you look here, all the documents which have any point defined here, they anyway have this uh, location uh, shown in the insert here. So this is another beautiful feature it provides. So it comes with all the nice features you could think of, the searching, face setting, highlighting, and auto-complete along with the geospatial searching. So I think uh, you can take the binary of uh, Solar and you can play around with this UI. I think by now, I'm sure every one of us are clear about what face setting is. It is nothing but grouping the search results in the various categories. So these categories could be uh, defined as well. And these are all uh, custom defined on the basis of the documents which are pushed in. Okay. So searcher are basically represented with the index terms. And along with that, the numerical count of like how many documents are there in the particular facet is there. So this is all which comes handy with the, the uh, UI of uh, the Solar. So this makes it very, very easy for a user to explore the search results. And it also helps you narrowing down the exact uh, search results which you're looking for. Okay.
So over here, I think you can see that uh, if uh, I'm looking under the books category, I can um, have faces on the language price, say binding as well, or the delivery time as well. So this is how my faceting works like. I think every one of us are aware of uh, how this works. Yeah. So faceting, I mean, I'm, I'm stressing more on faceting because uh, we have this very nice um, feature out here. So this is basically done in order to uh, narrow down the results so that the customer could reach to the exact document they're looking for. So along with that, I would quickly take up uh, what all nice features we have on the Apache cloud. So we talked about the uh, features like fault tolerance, high availability. So we know that um, these, these features are there um, in uh, all the big data applications. So this, uh, the, the solar comes uh, along with the uh, capability in which you can, uh, you know, experiment with uh, how you can start uh, the solar and the solar cloud mode, and you can have multiple uh, nodes on there, on on this. So this gives you the, uh, you know, efficiency in the format of uh, the default tolerance system and the highly available system. So it is very very flexible in handling the distributed searches and indexes. So if you uh, Look at few of the things here. Um, these are so. Th this is the zoo configuration file, which comes uh, along with uh, my solar installation. So it is going to define that where is uh, my data stored and uh, what is the sync limit, what is the tick time of each node. Okay, and this is going to maintain the um, zookeeper data as well. So this is where uh, all my things are maintained. And you don't have to use any external feature for it. This comes handy with uh, the Zookeeper instance. However, if you want to use any external uh, Zookeeper, you can do that. You can um, essentially give the path of uh, the external Zookeeper you are um, providing. OK, so documents can be sent to any server in the same fashion. And then if it is a write request, it is going to be redirected to the leader node. However, if it is the read request, it is going to uh, be redirected to any replica. Okay, so Zookeeper is going to figure out which one is the leader node, which one is the replica. So if we have the read no, uh, read uh, request coming in, it can redirect the request to any of the replica. However, if we have any write request, we would redirect the request to the uh, leader node. So this is all managed by the Zookeeper instance, which comes along with the Solar Cloud. So this is how the architecture of um, um, Solar Cloud looks like. We have millions of documents here, and we have millions of users here. This is the Zookeeper instance, which comes handy with the Solar installation. So this is centrally going to manage everything. I am uh, listing out three instances here, because anyway, uh, my highly available system is not going to rely on one Zookeeper instance. So we are going to take the possibility if the Zookeeper instance is going to go down. So we are going to have more than one instances just to ensure the highly available system. Then we are going to have the two servers over here. So uh, each of my server is going to have, uh, um, say, multiple shards. And multiple shards or uh, multiple, I mean, each, uh, we can have multiple nodes. And uh, each node could have more, uh, more than one shard as well. OK? So then we would have a leader uh, of each um, node here. And then we would have the replication in the other server. So this works in the similar man manner we have uh, the uh, sharding concept uh, works in. And then we have the uh, web services, which uh, would be used to query or uh, send the data to these uh, two servers, are exposed by the Solar Cloud. So these REST web services are exposed uh, in the XML, JSON, and HTTP format. So these are sent to the uh, load balancer, which is going to make sure that which server should take up the request. So I've just uh, sum up the, uh, summed up uh, what, all the, what are all the capabilities of uh, the solar, uh, which comes along with the um, solar cloud. So along with that, I'm sure, uh, because uh, I feel that uh, all of you have got uh, the background of Hadoop, how can we leverage these capabilities which come handy with solar with, uh, using, uh, by using Hadoop? So I guess uh, we all understand that Hadoop is um, something which works on the MapReduce framework. And it provides you with the efficiency in the format of storage. So what you can do is you can tweak uh, the solar capabilities by using 
or storing your indexes on Hadoop. So with this, uh, you can have all the nice features which come handy with Solar, and you can have the flexibility and the robustness of Hadoop in your application. Because Solar is going to provide you with fast and efficient, powerful uh, text searching capabilities, which comes handy with near real-time indexing and searching capabilities through Solar Cloud, which is very, very flexible, gives you with the distributed uh, searching and indexing capabilities, and it will do things like automatic failover and stuff like that. Along with that, it is very, very suitable for the NoSQL replacement of the traditional databases in many situations. So you can use Hadoop in case of uh, the flat file system, like I'm storing uh, my indexes right now on my file system. So we can replace this layer with the Hadoop layer. So we can do that, okay? And we can do the scalable indexing using the uh, Hadoop map rep uh, reduce and uh, pick jobs. And then we can load the index data into the solar. So with that data which is stored on the Hadoop uh, cluster or the uh, Hadoop uh, instance is going to be uh, used by the solar. So in all the major Hadoop distributions like Cloudera, Hortonworks, uh, Mapper, you can integrate the Solar um, easily, pretty easily. So this is the kind of architecture I was talking about. We can input the data in any format I would like to uh, push my data in. We can have the raw files, and this is going to be my HDFS, uh, which is going to uh, store the raw files and index files, which are uh, converted by my MapReduce or pick job. And then, I'm going to expose this, uh, you know, uh, distributed file system through my Solar instances, which sit on the top of Lucene, and my uh, web applications are going to interact with it in the format of query and response. Okay? So, uh, this is talking about the job trends, which you could essentially, uh, uh, you know, retrieve uh, by learning the skill. So I'm not going to uh, literally, you know, go into the details of how this graph is all about. I, I think uh, we can pretty much see that uh, from Jan 8 to Jan 15, we have seen such a big, you know, such a major shoot in the number of jobs or the number of uh, work which um, comes for the people who already have learned this skill. So not for the reason of job, I would say, but it is very nice tool to have uh, in your um, skill set. Okay? So this is uh, talking about uh, the major modules which we cover in the Solar course. So first, co first uh, module is going to talk about the introduction of Apache Lucene. Then we're going to explore the Lucene. Again, we're going to go through all the code examples and the uh, concepts which we're going to cover along with Lucene. Then we're going to introduce, uh, introduce uh, Solar the similarities with the Lucene, the features it, it uh, uses. Then we are going to talk about how uh, data is indexed in Solar and how searching goes about. So we have individual modules for it. And individual modules means uh, we are essentially devoting three hours to each of these topics. So module six is going to talk about all the extended features which come uh, along with the Solar, like faceting, highlighting, and uh, more like this, auto suggestion and stuff. The Module 7 is going to talk about the Solar uh, Cloud and Administration. And finally, we're going to have the final project. So we're going to explicitly discuss everything, and we're not going to actually leave you on your own. We provide you with extensive lab exercises as well. And there's this nice offer which uh, we've come up with for all the attendees of uh, this session, that if you enroll in the course and you were there in the webinar, we're going to provide you with the exclusive 25% off on the on this um, course. So you can note down the numbers. If you're interested, you can go ahead and reach um, any of the numbers or email, and you can enroll for this uh, course. So guys, take my word. This is very nice course, uh, very nice um, skill to have in your skill set. And um, I mean, you can also consider the job opportunities along with it. Plus, I mean, uh, you can explore the possibilities and the innovative applications you can build, use, build use, using Hadoop and uh, Solar. So, again, uh, I think we have a few questions. I'll take a quick, uh, you know, five, ten uh, minutes to handle uh, the questions if you have. Okay. So Rakesh says, uh, what is the input file format of Lucene text file or Excel sheet? So uh, Rakesh, I guess uh, your file could be in any format. So you can choose. If you want, I can um, show you an example as well. I have taken an example. 
So I just wanted to show you that uh, there is this uh, PDF, uh, you know, I have over here. So I can, uh, this is again another request handler over here, update request handler and the extract, uh, extract uh, data out of uh, the particular content um, type. So if you going to um, use uh, this, see I think I have already, uh, let me just post up the data on some other uh, say core. So this hotels is nothing but a core on my um, system on my solar instance. So I'm going to push this data into the Edureka core which I have here. So when I give uh, the query here, it is going to um, basically post and extract all the data which uh, comes along with uh, this PDF. So if you're going to explore um, this uh, UI here, I can quickly see that if my data is available here or not. Or let me just uh, go to this core and see if I have anything over here. So see, uh, I am uh, looking for something like webinar ID. This is the document ID which I have provided here. So let me see. It was on iText, uh, the document which I have pushed. So let me just see. I say ID equals to webinar ID, I think. So I'm going to quickly see if I have anything which is available. Why am I not able to scroll here? Okay, here. So let's see if the data is available. Okay, data seems not to be available because, uh, okay, webinar ID 1 is the ID. Okay, let's see if we get something now. Okay, do you guys see this? I have actually uh, tweaked entire content from this PDF and uh, my content uh, tag is going to consist of all the data which um, came along with this uh, PDF. Uh, Rakesh, does that answer, uh, answer your question? How can I push my data and stuff? So Nitin asked me that, uh, do we need to know Cassandra to know, understand solar as well? Not really, Nitin. We do not have any prerequisite that you should know this or any, any particular technology for that matter. In fact, it is built for the people who are not, uh, I mean, we, we do not want, uh, you know, Java engineers when uh, we're talking about, uh, you know, manning uh, solar, basically. So you just need a little bit of uh, Linux, little bit of, uh, you know, command, uh, commands uh, which come handy with your uh, windows. And along with that, little bit of uh, Java is, uh, again, um, icing on your cake, if, if you know it. Because that way you can, uh, you know, build your custom um, features on your application. Okay? So you do not really need to know Cassandra to, uh, to uh, learn Solar. So... Uh, Hadoop is, uh, okay, Raj asked me that Hadoop experience will be helpful. Uh, it is going to be certainly helpful. I mean, uh, it, it is going to help you building any innovative application. However, if you do not know Hadoop for that matter, you can still learn Solar here because um, in that way, uh, you can use your um, file system uh, directory for indexes. Okay. So along with that, we have... Uh, Okay, Rakesh says, um, I need to search products with release date and technical functionality. I want to learn solar and want to develop a product repository search engine for my need from scratch. So, okay. So, Rakesh, uh, that's a very nice uh, thing. I mean, a very nice visibility you have regarding where you want to go. So, definitely, uh, Edureka can help you. If, you. if you take up this course, you can uh, definitely take help from uh, your trainer and your support uh, members. In fact, um, for that matter, there are people uh, from my previous batch uh, who have been working as technical architects in various projects. So they have discussed how do they actually basically design the architecture or the schema of uh, the data set. So I have personally helped them reaching them to that level. So uh, th this is the level which, in which Edureka can help you. So Nitin, uh, how much uh, Java is needed? Well, there is no matrix as such how much is needed. Just the basic of uh, Java is needed. Okay. All right. Uh, 
so we insert data one at a time well you can push a lot of data as well if you want i mean uh, you you could say uh, star dot star as well and uh, you could also say star dot pdf as well but uh, for the type of uh, you know the the command which i have used i'm explicitly providing the literal id so as of now i'm just going to push one document at one go however if you want you can simply use the post dot jar which comes uh, along with uh, the solar installation that, that is the same uh, jar i'm using to extract the uh, extract and post the data okay so you can push a lot of data as well in one go okay all right uh, i've heard solar j what is that okay and then uh, that is again the java extension of uh, solar j so that is another uh, library basically okay rahul says is there any option to load in next file into ram for faster access and next is on disk would lead to latency i guess uh, okay well uh, rahul uh, you can do that in fact uh, with that you can create the type of indexes you could create the ram directory indexes as well so i think you're talking about the caching principle you want to make uh, faster searching so that's something which you can do i mean you're uh, you, i mean we uh, i mean no one really stops you for the, doing that okay hari has another question my scenario is i have 100 records i want top 3 should be from this 100 and should change for every request okay so hari i think uh, we're talking about the scoring once again so if you if you look in uh, the the uh, detailed um, you know course uh, highlighting we we are covering the boosting uh, as one of uh, the topics here so we discuss about how do we you know go about doing that i mean not about 100 records we're talking about 100000 records so you can apply that principle on those as well so we're going to tell you that how do you apply scoring so that happens in the uh, real classes basically so because we always run out of time in um, such webinars so okay uh, what happens if the size of the core gets more than the memory size so um, if anything that happens obviously the the searching is going to be affected the indexing is going to be affected so we're going to make sure that the uh, size of the core is uh, as much as at least um, uh, you know it it would uh, be dependent on how many how much data can you push inside that core yes it is going to definitely affect the search process it is going to basically um, slow down the process okay so i guess uh, that's all uh, i had to um, cover over here we've already um, i think extended 30 minutes so if we do not have any more questions i think uh, we should uh, okay rakesh has okay this is going to be the last question can you please tell me the difference between solar and cloud solar yeah sure okay so a uh, big difference between solar and solar cloud is uh, the difference between uh, them is on the basis of uh, the availability you do not have the replication principle which uh, comes in uh, the normal solar instance so on the cloud uh, you have uh, if you need an application which is highly available you should definitely go for solar cloud okay uh, just before anyone uh, you know ends uh, the session please make sure that do provide us the feedback of the session because uh, we would definitely like to make any corrections or any more um, changes we we have discussed the uh, modules of uh, the course uh, course as well so if you feel that there is something else which we should in, uh, include we should cover please do provide us the suggestions thank you so much so rakesh uh, coming back to your question once again the replication and the cluster management does not really comes in the normal uh, solar instance however they are there in the cloud uh, solar instance so that is a very big difference because the entire uh, um, you know disaster management and the uh, entire principle of replication depends on um, these features so i think if if you want to know about what has really changed you can look for the cap theorem uh, confusion there is this uh, nice webinar which was um, given by the lucid uh, lucid works uh, guys so i think you can understand that what uh, was the basis of building the solar cl uh, solar cloud okay uh, yes uh, rakesh the course does cover the solar cloud if you look here the modules um, <clears throat> we have over here 
we have the complete module on solar cloud and administration here. So we have the complete, um, uh, you know, handout and complete uh, plan for, and we're going to cover like how does this, uh, you know, thing works. Sure. Thank you so much. So if you do not have any more questions, we can disperse. That was so nice interacting with the very uh, nice bunch of people. Okay, we have the code repository, Nitin, yes. We have, uh, these are the examples which uh, come handy uh, for you, for all the folks, in fact. So these are all the assignments and all the uh, codes which we are going to uh, use in the classes. So yes, we have it. We have the, all the coding examples as well. Okay, thank you so much, Rahul. Do provide the feedback. Thank you so much, guys. Have a great day ahead. Thanks.